Hi, I'm Jane, um, President but also Chair of Asia Art Archive, and I'm delighted to be here today with Joan. And first of all, I think for on behalf of Joan and myself, we want to thank uh, Smith very much for making this opportunity possible, um, and in particular Jessica and Yao Wu for um, being such wonderful hosts. We had uh, have had a really um, productive time since we've been here. We're going to do this very informally. Um, all of you should feel free to ask questions. What I will, what we're going to do, just to give you some sense, is to show slides, show images from Joan's uh, collection of slides that she made uh, in China from about the 19, late 1970s uh, through the mid to a little uh, late 1990s. The ones that we've selected here. Just so that you know, uh, Joan has given Asia Art Archive the great privilege and opportunity to digitize um, a portion of her slides. She has hundreds of thousands of slides. Um, but we selected, as Asia Art Archive, focusing on contemporary art or recent art from Asia, uh, we've se uh, selected out 16,500 slides um, relating to uh, art made in China as well as other parts of um, Asia, uh, focusing on the period from about in the 1970s uh, to the period we're talking about here, to the mid-1990s. So we're going to focus today on Joan's view of China through art and through artists and her travels through China to, dis to research and study art at that time. But I want to start with a quote, and this is a quote by Joan. As you see on the, on the, on the, uh, on the screen, uh, we called this, or entitled this talk, a simple documenting exercise. And that's, in, in fact, a quote from Joan that I'm going to read right now. It related to her bio, or to the introduction to her bio. And I'm only reading a selection. She says, what had begun as a simple documenting exercise of people and landscape became a quest to reveal the full-blown culture, humanity, and range of forms and patterns in nature. If asked what kind of photographer I am, I always think of myself as a photographer of mountain mists. However, I do so much like to take pictures of people. I strive to have them reveal their inner quality and natural being. So I want you to think about this quote because I think it reveals a lot about her approach to the people, to the art, and to the images uh, that she took in China and el elsewhere. So for the first image, we're going to do a little chronological, in some ways, uh, walk through uh, her experiences in China. So Joan, perhaps, and this is going to be a question and answer, Perhaps you could talk a little bit about your first encounter with China and your request to see artists at that time. Um, there's a quote on that. This is from an interview that I did with Joan. But perhaps we'd like to hear it rather than reading the quote. I'd like to hear it from, from Joan. What was it like when you first went to China in the 70s and asked them to see artists? It was amazing. I mean, you would think they, they welcomed us uh, so uh, warmly, and then I said, "Well, I'd like to see the art uh, artists, and the artwork." And they said, "Oh, they're all in the countryside." And I thought, "Hmm, that sounds strange." Well, of course, it was during the Cultural Revolution, and uh, they'd all been exiled to the countryside to do hard labor in the fields and grow wheat and other. Uh, whatever they could grow to eat. I was really hard labor, and for some of the people it was really devastating and uh, did them in. A lot of young people went, and a lot of naughty things happened, and it was a very chaotic time. So, and I didn't get to meet any artists, period. So that's when Joan was in China in the 1972, early, 1972 was the first yes. time. Right. So Joan went back in 1978. Um, as we were saying, in 1972, there may not have been many artists, but there were certain lots of mouths. So yes. Oh, look yes. At Giant mouths everywhere. <laughs> and uh, well, you can see his, his successor was there briefly. He didn't 
last very long. But I mean, these enormous, e giant, enormous sculptures everywhere. It was very impressive. But in 1978, you went back. Yes. And, and you asked to see artists. Yeah, it was 79, I think. 79, oh, 70, but that's okay, well, 70. In any case, I, it was a whole new ball game. And uh, they were very happy to introduce me. And uh, the first day, I was living in the Peking Hotel, which was China's best hotel at that moment. And uh, the artist, a very famous artist from Shanghai, had come there and was being given a first exhibition. And I had read about him. And, and he'd been treated very badly by the establishment before that. So it was a real change. And so that was very exciting. So the first artist you met was Liu Hai Su. And do I have a, a Liu? Yep. Right oh, here. wonderful. Yes. Do the next, next one. Yes. Here he is. This was in the Peking Hotel. And he must have put his painting uh, up there uh, for the picture. He was very ancient. He'd been a very serious artist, really, since the, since the original revolution mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the 19... Uh, 1917, he was a, a teenager, but he was doing what he thought was good. And he went to France, and he studied French uh, painting, and then came back. And he was really very accomplished. But uh, there was a lot of disagreement in the art community about why would he go to Paris, and oh, his stuff isn't very good, and he was kind of dissed. And so this was a moment many, many years later when he was having a show at the National Gallery. So it was really a triumphant return to Beijing. I don't think it was his, probably his first visit to Beijing ever. And uh, anyway, this here he was. And he, he sitting with his wife in the Peking Hotel. And you can see a very beautiful plum blossom that he painted. And the next, so, so Joan was introduced at this point in time uh, through her hosts and other people to a group of artists who were um, considered masters and continue to be considered masters of Chinese, uh, primarily Chinese traditional painting or Chinese painting in, in traditional means. She went to see other artists. Um, this is Hua Jin Wu um, with, and importantly, a young woman who Joan met. Yeah, uh, I met her just by chance in Cambridge, Mass, where both of us lived. She had been studying in China for a year and a half, studying Chinese. Her father was Chinese, and her mother was a, 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 German. a German, yeah. Uh, they, were, they were both foreign students living in Washington just at, at the end of World War II. And uh, they moved to the Boston area and had many children, and Maria, was the first of that family to go to China to try to learn Chinese, uh, sort of an honoring her father's heritage. And she'd spent a year uh, or more studying Chinese and then came to the Central Academy of Fine Arts, which is a little bit like Valhalla. Very few get there. It's supposed to be the great art school. And he went there too. <laughs> exactly right. So Maria um, was very helpful to Joan. Oh, Maria she was, Fong was very helpful to Joan in helping her navigate the Central Academy and introduce her to artists at that time. There were other. The next <coughs> artist that Joan met was a gentleman by the name of Huang Yong Yu. Um, here's a uh, uh, who is he was very popular at that time. He had shown, I think, in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and so he was, and he was very interesting to meet and he had very funny ideas and uh, he, he I, there was such it, it was such an in group and so he played little tricks on me I think by introducing me to somebody who he was his great enemy and I don't know what it was all about <laughs> Um, I was and, an innocent. And just back, <laughs> Huang Yong Yu is well known because during the um, Cultural Revolution, there was a, a exhibition called the Black Painting Exhibition. And during this exhibition, artworks were shown in the National Gallery that were considered to be bad, bad elements, negative. And Huang Yong Yu um, was singled out because he had painted an owl that was winking. <laughs> and who knows what that owl was winking at? or about. 
Anyway, so he became uh, fairly well known at that time. But these artists who were very badly criticized during the Cultural Revolution were then rehabilitated in Chinese terms um, after the end of the Cultural Revolution. And then um, some of them, who were the great masters at the time, were really celebrated and treated, treated quite well. So Joan met quite a number of these artists. The next. Um, Another one of these artists, and he'd obviously, he'd also had some troubles during the Cultural Revolution, is oh, a man right. by the name of Yuan Yinsheng. And here is, we have Joan and this gentleman, Yuan Yinsheng, uh, being interviewed at that time. He actually uh, finally did get invited by the U.S. government to come as a visit, uh, distinguished visitor. And he actually spent time at the Smith campus. And uh, I think he learned a certain print, print technique that he liked very much. Anyway, he, uh, he's a major figure in the uh, art uh, stardom. And uh, he was involved in a, they were building a new airport. And they had a vision of wonderful murals in this new airport. And he created one of them. Next. It was very, very controversial. <laughs> Controversial because this is an image of the airport in in China at the end of the Cultural Revolution. Um, there was an opening of China. For those of you who may not know the history, um, China had been closed to the West. The United States established diplomatic relations in 1979. There was a sense of opening to the West for economic and other reasons, um, and therefore the importance the airport became important because that's where you would welcome your visiting. Um, Foreigners, foreign tra tra travelers, business travelers, diplomats. So a number of artists were asked to decorate, and Yuan was the biggest because it's on two walls. And uh, he was celebrating, one of the politically correct subjects you could have was to celebrate the national minority people. Of course, China has, I think, 55 different national minorities, so it's a lot. He, he was, uh, went to Xishuangbana, which is um, it's really uh, in Thailand or Burma it bordered borders. And so he spent time down there and was just enchanted with it. And he, he, they have a festival called the Water Festival, which is re the beginning of their hot season in April. And everybody throws water at everybody. <laughs> and uh, didn't mean to throw water down. But anyway, uh, that's what all these folks are doing. They're dancing over there in the corner and they're uh, you know, uh, celebrating the Water Festival. But. Oh my goodness. The next slide, please. <laughs> there were two nudes in the picture, and the ladies were bathing, and that was the big shock. Well, nudes at the airport. Headlines all over Asia. <laughs> nudes at the new Peking airport. I mean, it really oh. was a scandal. And it's so funny. And Deng so, Xiaoping. And so keep going. I just want to show another image. Get, okay, so uh, they're the nudes. So get, they decide. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so the, 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 there was, a, 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 over several years, there was a, many fights about this. And well, obviously, uh, one commissioner left town, and another commissioner put the uh, pace, uh, you know, the curtains, put, curtains, they curtains, yeah. put curtains over the yeah. offending the yeah. images. Oh, and, and, and the, uh, the national minority people who represent, were represented there were brought out to view it, and they said, so, you know, what? And uh, Deng Xiaoping came out to see it, and he said, is, is this what the fuss is about? So obviously, uh, nobody was that scandalized about it. However, they decided to board it up completely. Well, fortunately, they just put a board over it. So, right. it so they boarded it up. But Mr. Cohn went to see it fairly recently. The new airport has um, superseded the old airport. And so this old airport has become one terminal of the new airport. And you actually have to have a ticket to go to the place from which the plane, so you really can't go there anymore. But Kung Chuan decided that he was going to find out whether the murals still existed, because none of us have seen them for the intervening years. And what did you find out? Oh, actually, I went there and I asked the staff and the people around that they work for the airport. Turn and around and look at, look at the... <laughs> it seems that nobody knows where these murals are. 
So, uh, so I showed them the picture. Uh, one girl said, "Oh, I recall. This is in the staff uh, restaurant, a uh, cafeteria." So I, I just sneaked in with my video camera, and uh, I saw the beautiful mirrors on the other side of this building, uh, of this, 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 uh, this side, because uh, the airport is built like a uh, uh, symmetric. Uh, this mirror is on this side, and the other mirror is on this side. So, but the staff staff room is on this side, and uh, your insurance is on this side. But staff room, you can sneak in, but you're not uh, officially going. Uh, but people just go there to get their food, and but they never pay attention to mirrors. And uh, so I went to this side to see those mi mirrors, and this is a commercial restaurant, and uh, you're welcome to come in, you're welcome to take a picture, and you're welcome. So they turned my on for me to take a picture. Since this this side was blocked with the three news because, and it was blocked for a long time, and this side of the wall, is uh, the color was fresher. They've taken the block off this now. Side. Yeah. So, so they're still there. So yeah. Yes, there. yes. But the, and they've but, taken the, uh, but the you, you, sheet rock to, off. to see it, you have to get into the first terminal, which of course has been superseded by another one. So <coughs> you, you, that, t unless you have spe some, uh, what they call big head, somebody in power oh. to get you in there, uh, you you have to fly to southern China. Okay. I think. Anyway, so Joan, in addition, I just wanted to, because we're at Smith and it's very important as a two women art historians here, um, to recognize that there are were women working on the uh, mural project as well. Um, here's a woman named Chen Zheng Huan. This is her sketch. They did these very detailed sketches of the murals before they uh, were completed. And then the next image shows the mural in place um, that she was responsible for with her husband's name, Mr. Li Hua Ji. He didn't, he didn't work on it, but he, he, he took all the credit. So, and, and actually in many ways I've asked other Chinese people who, whether they know this, this Madame Chuan, and they say no, but then I mention the husband's name and they go, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, anyway, next, this is just a detail of her um, work. Now, um, in addition to the sort of older generation artists that Joan was introduced to, um, and who were great masters, and it was a great privilege for Joan and for all of us to see this material. Um, she was also introduced to younger generation of artists uh, at that time through various colleagues. And here's um, two pictures of the same artist, or two images. Um, his name is Chu Dishu, and he was from Shanghai. And yes, and, and there's uh, at least one or two of his uh, paintings in the museum. Um, and he, he, he and his family, that's his he and his wife and their child, and the parent, his, uh, no, because her parents, and they all lived in a room about half the size of this room, Gorgeous. and it was one of these beautiful old Shanghai houses uh, with a beautiful staircase, and there were many, I don't know how families. many people, how many families there were living in that building, but I thought, and here he was painting away. I mean, it was phenomenal. There was no complaint. There was just that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And he, fortunately, I can say, has been recognized. I mean, he's definitely out of the system. He didn't go to the right school. Didn't go to Smith College. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you don't go to the right school, you don't meet, you have the right connections, and you don't get shown, and so on. But somehow, he has been recognized, mm -hmm. and he really has. He's now in the Shanghai Museum. I mean, next to so. Here's just another image of his, and, and happily at Smith College, Joan has donated quite a number of works of his to Smith College, and we'll, we can show those a little bit later. Um, here's another younger generation artist yes. um, named Wang Keping. In fact, Joan and I, Joan took this picture, this is me on the right-hand side in 1980, Joan took this picture when we went to visit his studio. Maybe you can talk a little bit oh, about him. Well, he, he was, a, 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 a re classic tease and very uh, sort of aggressive about his maleness. And <laughs> anyway, we, he, we had a lot of laughs. We did have a lot of laughs. Here he is, here we are. Joan's taking this picture. Wang Ping is still, he's a very well-recognized artist. He lives oh, yes. in Paris now. 
He primarily does sculpture. He was one of the uh, founding members of a group called the Stars, um, one of the first in, um, uh, independent art groups in China after the end of the Cultural Revolution. Similarly, uh, Mr. Cho, who had been, we saw earlier, was part of a group called the, the Grass Grass Group. So um, Wang Keping was a, was a, a rebel um, at that time and quite a flirt. And in fact, the next slide, he, <laughs> he did this for us. <laughs> he hopped into the bed right next to the desk and rolled up his pants and rolled down his shirt and uh, <laughs> took a picture of us. <laughs> took a picture for us, perhaps hoping that we would join him, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Next. He, he, mar he married a French woman, I'm so happy to say, because he, he had to get out of China because he was just tempting them every day in a new way to arrest him. And uh, fortunately, by marrying a foreigner and leaving that veil of tears, he saved himself. Now, there were other independent art groups that blossomed, that developed during this time. Um, here's one group called the Contemporaries. Um, and there's an artist who migrated to the United States fairly early on, who's the second from the right. His name is Zhang Hongtu. And he had an exhibition at the Queens Museum. He lives in Queens now, and he's a wonderful, wonderful man and has gone on to great success, as well as uh, the gentleman on the far left is a man by the name of um, Zhang Hongnian, and he also migrated to the United States, lives in the Catskills now, and also has gone on to great success as a uh, realist uh, painter uh, of portraits and history, history, yeah, history, history paintings. Yeah. Um, a very grand manner kind of scenes. Yeah. Very, these people were so talented, they had so, so well much trained. to, uh, you know, I figured you go to China, they, there are no artists, you know, we can't show you any artists. I, 5,000 years of culture, there's no artists, come on. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't be so. And of course they definitely were. Yeah. So this is another group that came together and was exhibited in um, the Meishuguan, in the, in the uh, National Gallery um, during this very, this period of time, in the 1980-81, uh, 79-80-81. So a moment of unusual openness. Next. Um, but one of the other things that's really exciting about the materials, and these are just selections from the 16,000 slides that Joan, uh, that we digitized, was that Joan um, went to many art academies all over China, and was able and given access, because she became friends with many of the students, to um, their life. And one of the things that you don't see, and again I want to really emphasize this, is Joan had a very unusual opportunity. But more than the very unusual opportunity of being in China at a very special moment in time, she was incredibly energetic, as you can see. <laughs> Um, loved art, was interested in contemporary art, was an art historian, had worked in a slide library, which we think is marvelous, right? Um, had worked in a slide library, understood the importance of documentation of art, um, and had the energy to, and, and foresight and curiosity to go around to lots of different universities, lots of different art academies all over China, which was not easy at the time. The trains were incredibly slow, they were incredibly uh, modest in their um, uh, accommodations. And, um, and you needed special permission. And you needed special permission. And she, because she had been invited, her husband and she had been invited by the municipality of Beijing, she had those permissions. I, as a student, I was there at that same time, would not have had that same access. Um, and not only that, she's an accomplished photographer. She had a great camera. People in China at the time didn't have great cameras. Very few people actually had cameras. She also had the wherewithal and the, and the foresight to bring great film. Sounds really silly, but the film that you acquired in China would not, and we have some of those slides, people have given those to us, would not have lasted. They're just pink, you know, sort of shadowy images. And not only that, they wouldn't have had the ability to reproduce or develop those slides. So she, you sent them... Uh, yeah, I got them. Uh, either to, I sent them either to Japan or to Australia to be processed. Yeah, well, I tried to use Kodachrome whenever I could because the color is so much better, except in places where it's very dark and then I would have to use Ektachrome, which it, but see, some of that has lasted, I think. So there's this incredible sort of opportunity that happened, this sort of crossing of all of these 
um, unusual uh, situations that she has taken photographs of things that very few people, if anybody, has taken. So here's an example of going to the academies and seeing academy life. This is a boy's dorm. Eight, eight bodies there. Right. There are four. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beds um, in this tiny little room. And they're looking quite pleased to see Joan. <laughs> Next. Here's, we were wondering, Tan, whether you know this person. This is an a image of somebody at the Xi'an Art Academy. This is where Kong Zhang is. No? Next. Here's at the Guangzhou Fine Arts Academy, Fine Arts uh, Academy of Art. Um, is a classroom? Yes. Of drawing from a, a live model. And a yes. gen older gentleman here. Next. Here's a library at the Hangzhou Academy, the Zhejiang Academy, now called the China. Uh, China Art Academy. And, and let me say that books were really very hard, inaccessible. Libraries had been locked away and they really weren't reopened. And so the this, this struggle, to, I mean, the most precious thing I could bring them would, from the outside would be uh, art magazines. And they'd never seen European art or American art. I mean, it was really, it, it's hard to imagine. It was like being in a a, a, a pit or something. They, oh, that's how Yen used to describe it. He said, we, it's like living in the well, and all you can see is the sky. And then next, um, often, you know, here's artists were taken outside to sketch from life. And I think it's really important to, on to the last point, and I think, um, Kong, you can probably speak to this as well. When Joan went to visit these different colleges, or different academies, she was often asked to lecture about art, Western art. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your oh, yeah. lectures. Well, I actually had lived in Japan uh, previously, and I knew, I I'd traveled actually in Asia before that, and I knew that people were interested in American art because they'd never seen it. And so I always took slides with me, and so I came prepared. And it was a, it was a wonderful moment in, U.S.-China relations, oh, huggy, kissy. It didn't last very long, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I got invited to give lectures, uh, initially just at the Central Art Academy and then everybody else too, and uh, uh, many cities all over China, and I pursued that really always through student relationships. Uh, the only time I ever went through officialdom, it was a disaster because they wanted to make sure that you only saw something that wasn't very interesting. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, I was very lucky. I did this for two and a half years. But I have to say at the other end, I had to spend every summer for two and a half months doing nothing but cataloging. <laughs> and I'm so thrilled that Jane has rescued my treasures <laughs> for, for all of you who are interested in studying the development of contemporary Chinese art, which is quite phenomenal. I mean, there really is a lot of talent there. So Joan traveled like a honeybee all over China. Um, she went to Shanghai, Guangzhou, Yunnan, Xinjiang, Xinjiang, Hangzhou, Wuhan, and beyond. Oh, There's Wuhan one time. There was no electricity. Okay, we'll get to the Wuhan. <laughs> so she went to Yunnan. I don't know how many of you have traveled, but there was a school of art in Yunnan at the time. Here's some examples. Next. Another artist named Zhang Tiefeng from um, the Yunnan School. Who now lives in California in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> another here, she was in Xinjiang um, in western China. And there's an artist um, that she met at the time. Next. Here is a gentleman who's standing right in front of you. <laughs> you haven't changed one little wink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was in uh, Xi'an. And, and Joan went there to the academy. And then maybe you could talk a little bit, Tan, about how you met her and what the exhibition was. Oh, OK. So I was um, a language student at that time, and uh, our one, uh, uh, a husband of our English teacher, uh, who was a photographer, his name was uh, um, 
Gary Chapman. I think that uh, photographers and photographers from North America can be easily connected. So uh, Gary told me uh, that there's a photographer, but also an art historian from Beijing. She's uh, American, and she's uh, coming to visit China. So uh, whether you can, you want to be an interpreter for her? I said yes, because I was a language student by then. But I, I secretly do my own art, and we actually plan to make an exhibition, which is called the first modern art exhibition in Xi'an with a group of young artists from the Art Academy of Xi'an and uh, some other people who are just amateur artists. So we have received Joan. I was officially her interpreter. We went to uh, Artist Association and we met a lot of old artists and we met a lot of them um, um, like a rescuing dying artist like Shi Lu. Mm -hmm. And but secretly we 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 young artists planned to receive her for the Xi'an Art Academy. When she was visiting Xi'an Art Academy, we just uh, tricked the whole school and uh, we uh, made some plan and we just suddenly opened the door and she just popped in and <laughs> <laughs> of our show, and that show was going to be uh, in March, but she she was well, she was not going to be there. But she got the precious material of our work, so that's uh, yeah. that's the story. <coughs> and the show was, of course, uh, very well received, but uh, a lot of artists uh, two or three years ago arrested it because of the show. The two or three years afterwards, afterwards, right? Afterwards, oh not my. recently, but afterwards. You, you don't, what you I mean? Let's go back to the last slide. Look at this very controversial image that he had sculpted. I mean, it's hard to believe now in China that that work that is sitting in front of you, your sculpture, would have been considered controversial, but it was. It was considered to be rebellious, um, wrong, bad, something. Anyway, uh, amoral, bourgeois, um, spiritually polluted, things like that. Right. Um, obviously, that thing, lots, lots has changed in China. Next, so here's an artist from the Hangzhou Academy named Gu Wanda. Again, um, uh, Joan has donated a work by Gu Wanda, um, who lives in the United States now. And there's seen, you know, a lot of the artists had, did move to the United States um, in the late 80s and early 90s. Next. Yeah, but most of them went back. Well, yes, yes. Here's a uh, uh, Zheng Chengtian, a very important gentleman. He lives in Vancouver with his wife, who was a teacher at that time, and this is her work. You never hear about her again. Her name is Chen Aikang, but she was the head of a studio uh, at the uh, at the Hangzhou Academy, the Zhejiang Academy, and then later called now called the China Art Academy. And her, many of her students have gone on to great fame in, um, in the West and in China. People like Wang Guangyi and Zhang Pei Li and Gun Zhen Yi and Wu Shandran, artists like that, um, all worked with her as well as uh, with other teachers at the Zhejiang Academy. And he's really been a kind of <coughs> ambassador um, That's right. from Canada, which is politically much safer. <laughs> and. Uh, he really has organized many, many very impressive kind of conferences. He was at that time the head of the oil painting department um, of the uh, Zhejiang Academy, as well as the head of the international relations department, what you might have called the international communications. Um, and after Tiananmen, he left um, China and moved to uh, Canada. Next. Um, I wanted to insert this. Again, it's a woman artist who worked in a studio called uh, the Varbanov Studio. It's a very long story, but a very interesting story. A Bulgarian who came to China, uh, married to a Chinese French woman, and uh, he started a st an academy or a, an institute of, of tapestry art uh, in, at the Hangzhou Academy, and um, it was also very, very influential um, among certain people. Her name is uh, Zhu Wei. Next. Here's some artwork by an artist who's very well known now, Liu Wei from Beijing. Next. Um, another artist who's very well known named Gu Dushin, an early work of his work. 
next. And here we are in Wuhan. <laughs> um, this is an artist named Fu Jung Wang and his sculpture, which is a wonderful dragon, snake, probably a dragon. Um, and the last image, not of this show, was the artist and his colleagues saying hello to Joan. <laughs> and this is where you had the electricity problem, I think. Yeah, yes, yes. I came to give a slide lecture and the electricity for the city was out. <laughs> so there was no slide lecture. <laughs> anyway, again, a lot of these artists and a lot of these people have gone on to very celebrated um, uh, careers. On the right is a guy named Lu Pong, Pi Dao Jian, Huang Zhuan, as well as the artist himself and a number of colleagues from that area. Yeah, and the, the thing that I found so unbelievably amazing was there was so much talent there in all these places that you would never know. And they were, it, it, things were so remote in those areas because people didn't travel. You couldn't. You couldn't get permission. You couldn't pay the fare. You know, and it was just, I mean, to go and see the wealth of talent in, in Wuhan, it just blew my mind. <laughs> Loved it. Um, and again, one of the things, and we're now sort of jumping forward to 1995, there was a famous conference in China in 1995. Oh, women's conference, and the year of the woman. And uh, I figured, well, I guess I have to go. And uh, it was put in a place which is now part of metropolitan Beijing, but in those days it was a cow pasture. And uh, their women came from all over the world and they came in costume. It was so impressive. And I, of course, wanted to, I immediately wanted to sign up for all the art sections. Well, they were all canceled. So I figured, okay, I'll have to learn something else. And I did. And I mean, it was fabulous. I mean, I. I heard about the Kurds. I'd never heard of the Kurds before. And, you know, there were Kurdish women there and they were making their case and they were very articulate. Um, they don't have a country. And why does everybody kick them out? And, yeah. So we oh, yeah. Women. And they were, did dances and they came in these great costumes. It was truly one of the most emotional experiences. Next. People from Japan. So, and, and one of the things um, during this time, I mean, of course, there were women, women artists in, in the academies. I think in the 80s, and again, I'd like to ask um, Kong Chan this question, because in my research, and my research was on the 1980s in China, there were women in the schools. Um, the schools reopened um, 78, 79. After the Cultural Revolution, there was a big exam, and people could. Um, apply to go back to the colleges which had been closed during the Cultural Revolution to take this exam. And that my, my very, it's not a systematic, just anecdotal sort of empirical um, research has shown me that there was always a few women in the classes, but not a lot. So let's say there were 10, 15 in the class um, at the Hangzhou Academy, for example, there would be two women, fairly consistently, two to three women maximum in the class. I'm wondering, at your academy, were there many women in the class at, during the 1980s? Uh, during the 90s, I was, I was at the Central Academy of Fine Art uh, during the 1985 to 1988. I was in the history department uh, for my master. Uh, I recall that the fraction of the, of the, of the women students and the men students maybe the less than two to three. Mm -hmm. right. So it's uh, really few. But uh, there is a joke from the oil painting department because most of the women who took the uh, painting classes, uh, they, 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 they commit to be a uh, painting student and they fairly don't care about what they dress and what they look, they don't put uh, makeups. So the Zhang uh, Nianjun from oil department, he said, oh, this year we need to get some pretty girls, just based on the look <laughs> uh, skill. But uh, um, I think that uh, women artists uh, are fewer was not only because that uh, the, uh, the selection of the students, but also because it's, um, it has been um, uh, a great area. This area of art is controversial always in China. 
So if you are more courageous, you want to jump into this area, m normally those, no, those kids are boys. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. It's, a, it's an area for all of you who are looking for B PhD research. It's an area that needs to be studied um, more systematically. But it, what, what Kung is saying, um, it sort of uh, squares with what my perception was. But it's not exactly the area of my study, but obviously an area of interest to me. Um, is that there were, you know, it's like 2 to 10 or 2 to 12 would be in the classes. The classes were not very big at that, at that time, those initial classes. And in fact, I have interviewed a number of women, and they said that they were asked to apply, that they didn't think they were good enough, and that they resisted t making the application. And so people in their neighborhood, like men who were in the, in the Artists Association or in some of the higher areas, saw their talent and actually in, um, requested that they apply and go take the exams at that time. So what Kung is saying is that women didn't, didn't necessarily initiate is. There may have been women who did, but I think there was a reluctance um, to, to go out, put yourself out in that way. So there's cultural issues as well as this, sort of system or establishment issues around it. The issue around pretty girls, things like that don't exist. There's, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were talking about there's three sexes in China. There's males, females, and female PhDs. It's <laughs> a little bit what you're talking about. Um, having a PhD. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, these you know these this, these cultural issues change change slowly, and um, I think it's a, it's actually a very interesting area of research, particularly if you do something very specific, um, so that it doesn't end up being overly generalized. So we decided to go through Jones archive and choose pick out women and try to see who they were. Joan feels guilty that you didn't weren't as aware of the women. Well, I wasn't aggressive enough to, about reading women initially and always insisting on seeing women artists. And because I, as a guest, you know, a guest above all, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, above all, the guest must be nice to the host. So <laughs> you don't try to put yourself out necessarily. And I didn't really catch on until well, really <coughs> towards the end of my uh, tenure at, in, in China. So, so, but at, even so, so she said, you know, she said to us, I'm really sorry, you know, we didn't really, I didn't reach out to try to find artists in the early period, women artists in the early period. But we went through her archive anyway and just pulled the women artists, of which there were many, and many who we don't, I mean, we'd have to do more research to identify who they are. So go back one second. Here's Tai Jin, this is a later work, but in 1997, who's still, you know, a very accomplished artist in her own right. But here's an artist named Wei Ming, I've asked people um, uh, whether they know her um, in Wuhan, and people say no. Um, but she was an artist at that time that you photographed. Yeah, Wuhan had so many good artists. It was really next treasure trove. Here's another artist named Zhang Lei. Eerily interesting work. Really interesting work. We are bound. We have to. We're, we're committed to finding out who she is. She still exists, but she doesn't seem to practice that much anymore. Lin Tianmiao, on the other hand, is someone who's very well known. Um, yeah. She's shown in New York. She's shown in New York. She has a gallery in New York, Gallery Le Long. Does a fascinating work. Um, and it's very, fa very female. Yeah, but she will say it's not. Um, <laughs> Hu Bing, another artist, moved to the United States. Again, we don't see much of her work. I bumped into it once at the Brooklyn Museum about 10 years ago. I was really blown away. Didn't know it was a Chinese artist. Didn't know it was a woman artist. Really fascinating work that she did with broken glass. Um, next. Here's another Chen Yanying. She's from Shanghai. Fascinating work. She actually showed in the Shanghai Biennale in 2000, which was a breakthrough moment. Again, I don't know her particularly well. I don't know that she practices a lot. Really interesting artist. Next. Um, an artist that's a be little better known named Zhang Jie. Um, but again, I mean, wouldn't say she's internationally well known, but again, a very, very interesting artist. So there are, there's plenty of material and plenty of interesting artists there that need to be um, uh, better, better ex uh, understood, exposed. I certainly <coughs> sought out as many women as I could. So next. Smith College Collection, I think this is where maybe, Jessica, you can speak a little bit about it. We, we just selected a few um, works. Maybe we can look at those. So, um, I guess I'll just say that uh, Joan and Jerry formed a collection. It's both a, 
very fine collection of Chinese art in this period, but also represents these associations and friendships. A lot of them are gifts and have very personal stories attached to them. And in about 10 years ago, I think, you made a gift of the core of the collection to the Smith College Museum of Art, and it's been exhibited in its entirety and then is used very, very actively. Um, particularly Professor Su Jane Wu has taught from it regularly, is teaching from it this semester. And it's a, uh, it, it, it really, frankly, distinguishes the Smith Museum. We've become quite known for having material from a moment in um, more recent Chinese art history that is not well represented in Western collections. And so uh, it really has distinguished our efforts to build a program around Asian art. And, you know, I don't know if you want to say something. Maybe you can talk a little bit about yeah. how, yeah. You, how yeah. you, yeah. you know, Su. <coughs> was a very old man when I met him must have been in his 80s. Um, he had been a young talent <clears throat> in Shanghai just uh, in the, well, just after the revolution in, in 19, the early 20th century, so that, let's say, the second decade of the 20th century. And he, uh, he was from Shanghai, so he had access to some very sophisticated artists, and he also went to France. And, but he never, felt that he was, oh, I know, he, yeah, he, he was a, 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 he loved to talk, and he used to say things that you shouldn't say. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he was often in trouble. And I just happened to arrive in Beijing at the moment that he was having his first exhibition, he was a very old man, you can see, uh, uh, at the National Gallery. He'd arrived, he'd been recognized. It was really such a sentimental and, and wonderful moment. And one of the people who, uh, he was a, a, a contemporary of his, who, it was always a battle between the two of them. I guess they personally didn't like each other. And his, w the widow of the other artist. Xu Bei Hong. Yes, yeah, Xu Bei Hong, yeah. Widow. Picketed the National Gallery in Beijing <laughs> with signs. Right? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> it was so wild. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Here's some work by Cho De Shu that's in the collection. Another work by Cho De Shu. Here's work by Kung Bo with Boji. This is downstairs right now um, in, on view if you're in your yeah, room. And every, every art student always wanted to go to Dunhuang. These are some Buddhist caves in uh, Western China, really in the, in the desert, and they have preserved some really wonderful paintings. So that was like going, you know, if you were Catholic, going to Rome. This was, everybody wanted to go to Dunhuang and uh, copy the paintings, and he was very inspired by it. And it, it, it always seems so funny to see his work in Shanghai, which is such a kind of godless city like we have, <laughs> and this very beautiful, delicate, spiritual, you might call it. Anyway, he, he actually moved here with his family uh, to this country, but I, I haven't followed him recently, so I, I think it's very hard for Shanghai people to be any place but Shanghai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's another artist named Mada Sheng, who was part of the STARS group. Yeah, he's in Paris. He lives in Paris now. A lovely, lovely photograph by a woman named Lois Connor. Maybe you can talk a little bit. Yeah, about Lois she... and I were uh, met each other in Beijing, and she is a phenomenal photographer. She goes with a, you know, big four by five camera and trapes ups and down mountains. She's a very determined and brilliant lady. Mm -hmm. Does wonderful work, and I'm thrilled that um, we have something here. Anyway, so um, we, can, we can close here, um, but that's a sort of snapshot of um, some of the images that are, we have been, we as Asia Art Archive have been privileged with the opportunity to digitize all of these, and they're available now on site at Asia Art Archive in Hong Kong, for all of you who go to Hong Kong and that we're going to make them accessible um, on site in New York as well. But we're very pleased to announce that we have provided a uh, copy of the digitized slides to Smith and that we're working with you all to figure out how they will be made accessible here as well. 
Um, but we think it's on, uh, Joan requested that that, and we are delighted to share that material um, with, with Smith College and uh, Smith's friends. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. And if you have questions, please. You were at Smith. Yes. What did you study? Were you <clears throat> studying Chinese or history? And then how? Well, what's the beginning, I guess, of the story? <laughs> one of the rudest moments I had, excuse me, <clears throat> was it with the new president currently uh, in charge. I said, well, there wasn't anything at Smith. <laughs> and there wasn't. And I, I mean, it, it just, I, had, I got a job at Yale and uh, I overheard a group of professors saying, oh, Chinese art, it's the most brilliant painting in the world. And I thought, Chinese art? <laughs> What's that? And so I really, uh, I had a friend who was taking courses at Columbia, and anyway, it went on, and I, 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 I was lucky enough to have the opportunity. I found myself at the University of California in uh, Berkeley, and uh, yeah. there wasn't, it, it wasn't, as wonderful, if I had been a generation later when Jane was there, I would have had the great teacher of the world, but I didn't. But it was the beginning. And you know, you have to find your way and there are wonderful books and wonderful ways. And I, I was just very interested and I knew that there had to be a lot of talent there and there certainly was. And it was fabulous and I was lucky enough to uh, waylay brilliant students like Jane who had wonderful language, my Chinese, I'm fine in a taxi. They always ask me how old I am. I always say I'm 100. And they say, no, 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 how old are you? And I say, I say I'm 100. They don't get the joke. <laughs> but it stops the conversation. <laughs> well, anyway, it's been a treat to come here and to see all of you and I'm to share this. And I'm so grateful to Jane for digitizing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, thank both Joe and Jen very much, and thank everybody for coming. And last but not least, I want to thank the Global Studies Center for organizing this event for us, and you know, particularly Rebecca, Jenny, and um, Sarah for putting this together. A good partnership. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.